So today I'm taking you guys to rounders where I'm gonna play the one two match the stat game, but I end up playing a one two $25 straddle match the stat game. So I started off small and then things escalated very quickly. I'm actually not in San Antonio right now. As you can see, I'm in Vegas for Jamin's 50th birthday surprise party and it was incredible. But anyways, enjoy this one from rounders. I'll see you guys in there. I'm so excited to be back at rounders and today I'm playing in the one two match the stack where you can buy in for up to 75% of the biggest stack at the table. It wasn't long after I sat down at the 1-2 game that a 1-2-5 game opened up and some pretty splashy players were playing in that game. So towards the end of this vlog, I find myself playing a 1-2 $25 straddle game. It got huge. I was in for over $5,000. So stick around and I hope you guys enjoy the vlog. Let's get into some hands. Hitting in the mix here at this 1-2 match the stack, I'm in for $1,500 to start and I get dealt jack nine of diamonds under the gun. We're a bit short handed, so I thought it was fine to open. So I raised to $15, pick up two callers, so we're going three ways to a flop of king 8-8 eight, eight with two clubs and one diamond. They check it over to me. We definitely have range advantage on this board as our opponents would three bet their best king x combinations pre-flop. We block king jack and 8-9. So if we do put out a bet and get called by an opponent, there are some good turn cards that we can continue to barrel or pick up equity on. It's gonna be really hard for my opponent to continue on this type of board texture, even if they do call the flop. So I put out a bet and I don't need to bet big here into two opponents and on this very static board. So I bet $20 and luckily they both fold and we pick up our very first pot here with jack high. So at this 1-2 game, we're playing $5 double board, no limit bomb pots. And in this one, I turn the nut straight with 9-8 on the top board. And then on the bottom board, I river a pair of nines to actually scoop this pot. So I end up winning about $200 in this hand. Getting my feet wet in this game, I'm noticing that players are very, very sticky pre-flop. So they're pretty much never folding to any raise because they want to see a flop, which is pretty common at these stakes. In this hand, there's a $5 straddle, a couple players limp before me, and I'm on the button with queen 10 offsuit. This is a hand that can play decent post-flop, but not a hand that we want to raise pre-flop. If it was suited, I would, but we pretty much have no fold equity as our opponents aren't going to fold to our raise. I'd rather just see a flop, keep worse hands in, and try to cooler somebody. So I limp, and we're going five ways to a flop of jack 10 jack with two clubs. Small blind leads for $10. Early position and middle position make the call, and now it's on me. I have position. There's a bunch of dead money in the middle at this point. I raised to $50 for value and as well as protection against random overcards as well as flush draws. We also have the button so we can utilize our position in this hand. I raised to $50 and only one player in middle position calls so we head to a turn card which I didn't take notes on but I'm pretty sure it was a blank like a deuce three or four. No club. He checks, I check. I'm not entirely sure what the river was but at this point I just want to show down my hand. When he checks, I check it back. I'm not sure I like my play with no plan for the turn or river but nevertheless we did scoop up some dead money and our opponent ended up showing down 9-7 offsuit. At this point in the session, things are going pretty well. We were in for $1,500 and now our stack is at $1,745. In this hand, we're still a bit short-handed, so I raise pocket sixes under the gun to $15. My direct left calls and the small blind calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of king 5-4 with two hearts. The small blind checks and now I am out of position. We do have the king high board to our advantage because our opponent to our left should not have many king x hands. He should be pretty pair dense heavy like middling pocket pairs like sevens, eights, nines, tens, possibly jacks if he doesn't decide to three bet that one pre-flop and some suited ace x type hands. So I think for all these reasons it's good enough for us to put in the bet and so I bet $15. He calls the small blind fold, so now we're going heads up to a turn card, which is a seven of hearts, so now we actually pick up an open-ended straight flush draw. This card is a little bit deceiving because while we could already be beat by a flush on this hand, we are drawing pretty slim if that's the case. We do pick up some straightening outs, but as you can see here, we can mix between betting or checking, and in this instance, being out of position, I decided to keep the pot manageable and checked. My opponent did put out a bet of $35. Of course, I make the call and we head to a river card, which I'm not sure what it was, but I know it was a blank. I forgot to write it in my notes. I check and luckily our opponent checks back as we want to get to showdown, although we're going to be losing a lot of the time here. And sure enough, we flip over our hand and then our opponent shows pocket jacks with the jack of hearts. So we indeed were drawing pretty slim there. Not sure we could have got that hand to fold, especially with him holding the jack of hearts, but we get out of here unscathed. 
this hand, there's a limp under the gun and I'm next to act and look down at Pocket Kings, I raised $20. The big blind calls and the original limper calls were going three ways to a flop of Jack-7-4 with two diamonds. They check it over to me and I bet $25, don't need to bet too big here. The big blind calls and the limper folds, the turn is another seven. Big blind checks, since this card can connect with our opponent some of the time, he's gonna have some 7x hands that continue for that price on the flop, like 7-8 suited, 7-6 suited, hands like that, maybe even ace 7. So while we can't polarize on this card, we can definitely size up and charge all of his jack x holdings as well as his flush draws, so I'm gonna put out about a 75% pop bet and I bet $75. He makes the call, the river is a very very bad card, it is a diamond. My opponent then shoves for his remaining stack which is 99 for this price and what's in the pot, I can't fold, especially with the king of diamonds in my hand. I just have to hope he's overvaluing a jack x combination or possibly turning some random hand into a bluff, but we're gonna make the call and unfortunately see the bad news as our opponent called us on a paired board on the turn for a pretty big size with 9-3 of diamonds. And just like that, our stack went from being up a couple hundred dollars to now down a couple hundred dollars. In this hand, there's a raised $15 from the hijack. The cutoff and the button make the call. I look down at king jack of spades in the small blind. I'm out of position, I have a hand that can play well post flop, and I block strong hands like ace king, pocket kings, pocket jacks, ace jack, etc. As you can see, this hand plays pretty much as just a three bet in this spot. It's a great time to do so, we're out of position, and we can get some dominating hands to fold, like king queen offsuit, and some ace high hands like ace 10 offsuit, etc. I raised a $75, I want to make it a big obnoxious size where they're not going to want to continue with a lot of their hands. So I do indeed raise the $75, they all fold, and I pick up about $45 without having to see a flop with king high. In this hand, there's a limp under the gun and the guy to my right limps as well. I'm in the hijack and look down at ace nine offsuit. This is on the cusp of a hand that I should be raising, but I was wanting to keep up the aggression, so I raised to $25. The big blind, the original limper, and the limper to my right call, so we're going four ways to a flop of absolute gin, queen nine nine. It's almost 100% certain we have the absolute best hand at this point as pocket queens should have three bet preflop and we have the best 9x combination so we are sitting pretty. The guy at my right decides to lead for $30. I don't see a point in raising as we want to keep all worse hands in and keep ranges wide and kind of play our hand a bit disguised so I make the call. All the other players call as well so now we're going four ways to a turn card which is the absolute worst card we could have possibly seen. It is another queen so now any queen x combination has a better full house than us. Luckily they all checked me on the turn and there's no point in betting at this point. We're only going to get called by better and now we can and keep the pot manageable to possibly bluff catch rivers. The river is a total blank and it folds around to the limper on my right and he bets $45. For this price, I have to make the absolute crying call here and I am dying inside at this point, so I do put in the call. The big blind actually finds a call as well and I have no idea what he had, but the opponent to my right flips over queen three of diamonds and now it feels like nothing is going our way. So even though the hand didn't work out, I was happy I was continuing to stay aggressive and keep the pressure on. And if you've been following the vlog for a while, you know my game has improved immensely. By this point, you know my friend Steve Blay from Advanced Poker Training. And over the years, he's received hundreds of emails asking for a poker course with no bull, no jargon, and no irrelevant math. That's why he created Steve's No Bull Poker Course. If you're tired of courses with dozens of charts to memorize and stuff like that, this course has 30 videos, 30 days, and immediate practical takeaways to improve your game. Every important concept you need to know to dominate no limit hold'em cash games and tournaments in one month. This course covers exploiting over aggressive players, three betting, pot control, stack to pot ratios, bet sizing, squeeze plays, river bet over bluffs, triple barrel bluffs, and so much more. Click the link in the top right corner or in the video description and watch the first video for free. You can get the entire poker course at a 66% discount for the next few days so do not miss out.
And just like that, we find ourselves stuck almost $400 in this game. We were off to a super good start, but unfortunately things took a bit of a frustrating turn. It was around this time that I saw a seat opened up at a 1-2-5 game and it looked pretty juicy, but there were some tough players in there such as Big Daddy Chaz. But as I'm trying to move up in stakes, I want to get in games that I feel like I can make a profit in, test my skills, and continue to learn and get better. So it's time for us to jump in the 1-2-5 game and we're going to be in for $5,000. I'll get to the point where I'm playing these higher stakes games more regularly, but right now I still only have a handful of higher stakes sessions under my belt, so I felt like it was best and the smartest decision to not vlog while I'm playing this game. However, when I did get involved in some bigger spots, I did whip out the camera and try to take notes, so bear with me and I'll go over a few fun or not so fun hands from this higher stakes session. All right, so here we go. I was in for $5,000 and the way this game worked is there is a mandatory $5 button straddle on, but that $5 button straddle quickly became a $25 button straddle. So just like that, this game got five times bigger. And in this hand, I'm in the big blind with the $25 button straddle on. It actually folds all the way around to me and the button has not acted yet. I decide to flat here with ace three offsuit with some devious intentions. The button is a pretty splashy and aggressive player, and sure enough, when I call, he decides to put in the raise to $125. I have an ace, so I'm blocking some strong hands he might have, and I know he's going to be doing this with a lot of merge range type of hands like suited connectors, offsuit, and suited broadway hands, etc. So I'm going to put in the limp raise to $400. This will look really strong, as he probably perceives me to be a pretty tight player. He thinks for a bit, says, I'm going to give you some action, and then makes the call. We head to a flop of ace, six, eight with two spades. While I would certainly be able to check my stronger ace-x combination type hands, with this exact holding, I'd rather just bet for denial and try to get hands with some equity to fold and not let them catch up. But I would check here with a lot of my really strong hands like ace-queen suited, ace-king, pocket kings, queens, and jacks being out of position. But I do decide to put in a small bet and I bet $250. He thinks for just a little bit and then makes the fold, so just like that we win ourselves the biggest pot of the day. So things were going pretty good. I was picking up some good hands like ace queen and I won about a $250 pot on that hand. Then I got dealt pocket aces and won another couple hundred with that hand. Then I got involved in this one. In this hand, it folds around to me in the cutoff and I look down at the beautiful king queen of diamonds and I raise it up to $25. A very solid player in the small blind who likes to three bet a ton puts in the three bet to $125. My hand is too good to put in the 4-bet, we want to realize the equity of our hand and play this pot in position, so I make the call and we're going to a flop of deuce 5-6 with 2 diamonds, so we flop ourselves the king high flush draw. My opponent leads small for $75 and I make the call, I don't think I need to turn my hand into a bluff, we have a very strong draw. So we head to a turn card which is the 8 of clubs. Now my opponent bets $250. Again, for the same reasons I listed on the flop, I'm going to do the same thing on the turn, so I make the call and we head to a river which is a three of hearts, so now there's a four liner to a straight out there. Now my opponent just really boggles my mind, he puts out a bet of $1,100. While I don't know much about my opponent, it seems as though this card would be more beneficial for my range than his being out of position and three betting and me as the three bet caller, but I know this opponent likes to three bet a ton of hands, so I can't put it past them that he might have a hand like ace four suited in this spot, but still very confused and a bit frustrated. I have to fold my hand as I'm not going to turn this one into a bluff, and unfortunately we cannot get there. Unfortunately for us, after that hand, things went south. Nothing was going my way, I couldn't win a pot, and I ended up playing a massive hand against that same opponent with pocket queens later in the session, and I ended up topping up and was in the game for $7,500 and cashed out with $5,745 for an unfortunate loss of $1,755. And if you're wondering what I use to track all of my poker stats, you guys gotta check out Poker Analytics. It's the best app out there to track your winnings, losses, and all your stats so you get a good grasp on what your hourly rate is. There's so many different functions on this app. Please go check it out. There's a link at the top of the screen. It was time to head to the rail, grab a nice cold beer, and drown in my cash game sorrows. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. I really hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? We are just getting started on this insane journey. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.